This lesson is over logarithms. Logarithm notation is written as log base a of x equals y, which really means a raised to the power of y equals x. So what this means is the power to which a is raised in order to produce x. Now the logarithm definition again is log base a of x equals y such that a raised to the power of y equals x where x has to be greater than zero, a, the base, is a positive constant other than one. The key thing is logarithm is an exponent. So take a moment to create this chart of a logarithm equation compared to the exponent equation. All right, so let's see what this really means. If you have log base three of nine, to best understand this, we look at it as an exponent. The base of three means I have three raised to some power equals nine. What is that power? Well, that would be a two, which means log base three of nine really equals the power or exponent of two. Now let's look at log base six of one. Well, what does that really mean? It means six raised to some power equals one. Do you remember your rules of exponents? Well, recall, anything raised to the power of zero equals one. So that means six must be to the power of zero for it to equal one. So log base six of one equals zero, the power. Next, we have log base five of 125. Again, that really means five raised to some power equals 125. What is that power? Well, that would be three. Log base seven of one seventh equals what? Well, again, our base was seven, so that means seven raised to some power equals one over seven. Now recall, we're trying to find an exponent, so you need to refer to your exponent rules. In a to the negative n power is the reciprocal. Since seven is in the bottom of a fraction, means it's going to have a negative exponent. In this case, our exponent is negative one. So log base seven of one seventh equals the power of negative one. Log base 11 of square root 11 equals what? Well, our base was 11, so 11 raised to some power equals the square root of 11. Again, we go back to our rules of exponents. a raised to the power of one over n equals the nth root of a. Now notice, we're taking the square root of 11. What number is understood to be our index? Well, since we read that as a square root, there's an imaginary two which means this is 11 raised to the power of 1 half. And so log base 11 of square root 11 equals 1 half. Log base 2 of 16 equals what? This is your try it problem. Well, we understood that to be two raised to some power equals 16. Hopefully you realize that is a power of four. 
Next, log base 8 of 2 equals what? This 2 is your try it problem. You saw that would be 8 raised to some power equals 2. And the cubed root of 8 equals 2. And because we're talking about a cubed root or an index, it would be 1 third. Example 1, write as an exponential equation. For a, we have log base 5 of 1 over 25 equals negative 2. In this case, we're not trying to solve or find anything. We're just trying to change the notation. So instead of seeing log, I want to know what is my base, 5, raised to what power, negative 2, equals 1 over 25. That is your exponential equation. For b, we have log base 1.2 of 1.44 equals 2. Can you rewrite that as an exponent? Yes, it would simply be 1.2 squared equals 1.44. Example 2, write as a logarithmic equation. For a, I have 2 to the 4th equals 16. Currently, it's written as an exponent, but I want to change it from an exponent into a logarithmic equation, meaning I want to see the word log. So it'll be log with the same base. And it'll be base 2, which gives me a result of 16, equals my exponent, which in this case was a 4. So log base 2 of 16 equals 4. For b, we have 10 raised to the power of negative 2 equals 1 over 100. Write this as a log equation. So we keep log. The base is 10. Gives me a result of 1 over 100 equals the exponent, which was negative 2. For c, I have 4 raised to the power of 1 third equals the cube root of 4. Again, write it as a log equation. So it is log base 4 of the result cube root 4 equals the exponent, which was 1 third. Example 3, find the following. For a, we have log base 27 of 3. In this case, we are being asked to find the exponent. Well, what this really means is 27 raised to some power equals 3. Well, 27 is 3 cubed, but that means that 3 is the cubed root of 27. And cubed root means a radical, which means the exponent would be a fraction. It would be one third. For b, log base 2 of 64, well, that really means 2 raised to some power equals 64. What is that power? That would be a power of 6. For C, we have log base 2 of 1 fourth. Well, that means 2 raised to some power equals 1 fourth. What is that power? Well, since it is in a fraction form, it means it will be a negative exponent, which is a reciprocal. And in this case, because 4 is the same thing as 2 squared, it will be a power of negative 2. Next, we're going to talk about common logarithms. Common logarithms are logarithms of base 10, which means if you see log of x, 
That means automatically log base 10 of x. In other words, if you do not see a base, it's understood to be an imaginary 10. Now recall the definition of logs. You can only take the log of a positive value. So log of x has to be where x is greater than 0. Now common logs can be used on the calculator by using the button labeled LOG. So example 4, use the calculator to approximate to four decimal places. For A, we're being asked to find log of 21. Notice there is no base, which means we can use the calculator. So you click log and type in 21. From there you click enter and your calculator gives you the long value. Now remember, round to four decimal places. You should find it to be 1.3222. For B, we're being asked to find log of 72. Again, click the log button, type in 72, click enter, and you should find the same value that I found on my calculator. Again, you must round to four decimal places, and you should find 1.8573. For C, we're being asked to find log of negative 93. Type it in our calculator. We click Enter, and notice that doesn't look like the other ones. Notice you can only take a log of a positive value. That's a negative 93. That is not positive, which means this value does not exist. Example 5. Find the exact value, but this time with no calculator. For A, we have log of 100. Now notice, do you see a base? No, so we interpret that as 10 raised to some power equals 100. What would be the power? Well, that would be a 2. For B, we have log of cube root of 10. Again, do you see a base? No, so we interpret it automatically to be 10 raised to some power equals the cube root of 10 what would be the power? Well, that would be one-third. Next, we're going to talk about natural logarithms. Natural logarithms are logs of base e, which means whenever you see ln, that means natural logarithm, it means automatically it's running off of base e. Now, E is that 2.718 value. Again, because this is still a logarithm, X has to be greater than 0. But on the calculator, this can be represented by the LN button, which has been highlighted on the given calculator. Example 6. Use the calculator to approximate to four decimal places. For A, we're looking for the natural log of 11. So type in LN, type in the number 11, select Enter, and you get a long decimal value. Now round to four decimal places, and you should find 2.3979. For B, find the natural logarithm of 22. Again, click the LN button, type in 22, select Enter, and again you get a long decimal value, but round to four decimal places, and you should find 3.0910.
change of base formula. For any log base A and B and any positive number M. Log base B of M equals, now we have a fraction. In the top, we have log base A of M. And in the bottom, we have log base A of B. Example 7 says, use the change of base formula to find the following. Round to four decimal places. For A, we have log base 5 of 8, and it says change using the common logarithm. So currently our base is a 5. We want to change it to a common log. Now remember, common log runs off of base what? Well, that's base 10. So we draw our fraction bar, and in the top we're going to write the log with the base we want which would be log base 10 of the larger value, the big value, which happens to be 8. Now in the bottom, we use log of the same base that we want, which in this case is log base 10 of the sunken down number, which is the 5. Once you've set it up in this way, we're ready to use the calculator. Because it's log base 10, that means we can use the log button on the calculator. So you would simply type log 8, close parentheses, divided by log 5, close parentheses, and when you press enter, you will get the decimal. Now the direction said to round to four decimal places, and hopefully you find that to equal 1.2920. For B, we have log base 5 of 8, but this time it wants us to use the natural logarithm. So again, we start with log base 5 of 8, and we're using change of base, but specifically natural logarithm. Now natural logarithm runs off of what base? Well, that's base E. Another thing is natural logarithm uses the notation of ln. So in the top, because it says natural logarithm, it will be ln which runs off of base E of 8, the large value. In the denominator, we again have the same base of natural log of E of the sunken down number, which is base 5, or which is 5, excuse me. You type that in the calculator, which would be ln of 8, close parentheses, divided by ln of 5, close parentheses, select enter, and you should find 1.2920. Now notice, both A and B both started with log base 5 of 8. Notice their results. They are the same. So this goes to show it doesn't matter whether you choose to use a common logarithm or natural logarithm the value will be the same.